I'm going to walk you through an example of video analysis. And it's with the video I made, and I'm going to use tracker video analysis. Uh, welcome to the new world. But we now have Tracker online, so you do not have to install Tracker on your computer, which was a bit of a problem because it was a Java program and computers don't like Java. And so this is actually apparently implemented in JavaScript, but it should work the same way. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Um, now, I made a video, and I, I want to point out what it says down here because you, even they can't read it, I think this is... Uh, actually, let me make this bigger. Can I make this bigger? No, it didn't make it bigger. Okay, so it, there's a bunch of details here about, uh, and I'll put a link to Tracker uh, down below. It works just like the normal thing. Now, this is the thing right here, video type supported. Um, MP4 with H.264 codec, I think works best. Uh, and then they tell you how to convert things. So if you record stuff with your phone, my phone saves it as an MP, no. I, I don't know, I had to do a conversion. I, I video recorded it with my phone and then I had to convert it. I didn't use Handbrake, I used uh, uh, FFmpeg. Uh, it's a command line tool, but this should work too. They also say cloud convert. I haven't. I didn't try that either, but just so you know, either use videos that, that you have that come with the program or that I give you or whatever, but let's just jump into the program. So I'm actually gonna use the Java version. Uh, like I said, it's pretty much the same thing. And I've already got the video loaded in here. So let me make this a little bit bigger so that we can see what's going on. Okay, so that's gonna be big enough. So the idea of tracker video analysis or any video analysis program is to look at the location of an object in each frame. And if we know the video frame rate, let's say 30 frames per second, then the time between each frame is 1 1 30th of a second. And then I can mark the frame position of the object to get X and Y values. So I can get X, Y, and time values, and that's kind of cool. Here's a video. Uh, let me just see if I can play this for you. And I made this video. I'm not going to uh, do the whole thing. Uh, I will show you a couple of important points. Number one, I do have a meter stick in there and that's important because I need to know the real life scale to pixel scale conversion. Now, point out number two, if your camera's moving around, then if you mark, have a stationary object, it's gonna move in the frame. And so you don't want that, right? You don't want to have a motion a camera moving. You can deal with that, but it's, it's more complicated. Number two, I want the motion perpendicular to the video frame, uh, the video, the way the video is looking. If the ball is coming towards you, then you're not gonna be able to get that X, Y position. And on top of that, the size of the ball and the scale changes as you get closer because of angular size. So you want something fairly a good distance away and you want it moving perpendicular to the view of the camera. And you want the camera not to zoom and you want the camera stationary, ideally. Okay, so let's get to this. Uh, the very first thing I'm gonna do is to trim the video, which you don't really actually have to do. But you'll notice that this video has uh, a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna go back in time with this. Let's see, now I'm just gonna go forward until I throw the ball. Okay, there's the ball. Now I'm gonna step forward. And I'm gonna, I wanna do to set the first time frame to the first frame that I really care about. I don't care about, you know, all that other stuff. So I'm just gonna move this forward until I'm just clicking that forward. I want it to leave my hand. If you want to look at the motion of the, of the ball in the hand, that'd be fine too. But right there, it's out of my hand. So I'm going to call that the first frame. To do that, I go up here to this icon that looks like a film. It says show or hide the, what does it say? Show or hide the clip inspector, the clip settings. If I bring that up, now it says start frame zero. But down here you see the frame 197. So I'm going to put start frame 197. Now you could also uh, have a change of step size. So right now I'm gonna look at one frame at a time, but if it was a lot of data or if it's really fast, um, you know, 60 frames per second, you might wanna skip that. You might wanna look at every second frame or even every 10 frames, depending on the motion. And you could also set the end frame, but I don't care about that. Uh, down here, it says the frame rate based on the name of the video, the video file, the metadata in the file says 30 frames per second it's possible that's not true, right? If you download a, uh, 
a slow motion video, it may play 30 frames per second, but the real frame, may, frame rate may be something different. So you can change that there. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. The next thing I'm going to do is to put my X and Y axis, which you don't have to do, but I, I wanna do it here just to make sure things are working right. So up here, you see this little purple button. It says show or hide the coordinate axis. I'm gonna click that. And now I have my coordinate axis. I can drag this around and put it wherever I want. Um, I'm just gonna put it down here, but I wanna move over here and make sure it's lined up. You see that? You see that line in the chalkboard? I wanna make sure my Y is actually in the vertical direction, which it is here, even though it doesn't completely look like that because I don't have the camera set up perfectly, but it's close enough. And then I can put this wherever I want. If you do need to rotate it, if you grab this little handle right there, you can rotate your coordinate system. But again, I don't wanna do that and I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. I'm gonna need to rotate it back. It was perfect. There, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna put it over here, kind of right there. Okay, next, I need to set the scale of the video. To do that, I'm gonna go up here to this little uh, show, hide, create calibration tools. I'm gonna to click the arrow and I'm gonna say new calibration stick. So the calibration points is a very, very useful tool that allows you to like uh, deal with uh, a camera that's jiggling around or zooming or whatever. But in this case, it just puts a little blue stick and it says one, one whatever. I want it to be one meter. So I'm gonna grab the end of this and put it at the top of my meter stick and then grab the other end and put it at the bottom of the meter stick. If you need to zoom in, you can. Um, let's zoom in to 50%. Oh, that's even, that's worse, 100%. And then you can see a little bit better. Uh, that's right there. That's right there. And then it, it's at one meter. That's what I want. If, if it's a different distance, you could change that distance. You just click right there and type that different number. So normally I can move this out of the way. I'm gonna grab that stick and just put it over there out of the way. You could turn it off if you want to. And let's go back to zoom to fit right there. Okay, now we're pretty much ready. I'm going to start collecting data. And to do that, I'm gonna click track, new, point mass. And I want the ball to be a point mass. And you'll notice that it brought up this a data table that's empty and two graphs that are empty. And what I want to do now is just to mark the location of the ball in each frame. So if you go down here and I hold the shift key, you see that it turns into a, a crosshair and I'm just gonna click on the location of the ball. Now, you'll see that the ball is actually you know, pulled out because the speed during the, the motion of the ball, it actually moves during that 1 30th of a second. So you actually capture uh, more than, than an instant of time. So I'm just gonna try to click in the middle. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a pretty small ball anyway, so that should work. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click and it will move forward one frame. And then I can just keep clicking. So this is a little bit tedious, but click. It's not too bad, click. You don't have to say click, but I kind of like it. So I'm just gonna say click. I'm looking really close and normally I would zoom this in because you know it's kind of hard to see. So click, 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 click. See, it's not too bad. Click, click, click. Now it's kind of hard to see it there so sometimes you may have to guess. I tried to get a tennis ball. I thought it would show well on the blackboard, which it does, but it doesn't show up well against that uh, cinder block back wall. Almost done, click. I haven't been saying click, 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 that's good. Okay, so now I have data. And you'll look at that data right there, it looks pretty nice. Let's look at the X motion first and see what we can figure out from that. So I'm gonna go over here to this. If you wanna change this, you can. it can calculate velocity and stuff like that. Um, if you click on this title, you can have it calculate a bunch of these things. Um, you know, you could change it to the Y, but you could do X versus Y. You could change the coordinates to whatever you want. And it does calculate velocity uh, using um, more than one data point, uh, but we don't have to worry about that right now. So let's just keep this as it is. So I wanna, I wanna find the, I wanna analyze this. So I'm gonna right click on this graph and go to analyze. And it brings up a separate window. Uh, now, first of all, if I throw that ball, once it's in the air, the, the gravitational force is straight down. And so that means that the forces in the horizontal direction should be zero. 
the velocity should be constant. And that's exactly what we have here. We have a position versus time graph that's constant. And we can find the slope of that, and the slope of that should be the velocity. So let's do that. I'm going to go up here to measure. No, I'm going to go to analyze. Curve fitter line. And you'll see it fit a line in there right, right there. And I have uh, the a, x equals a t plus b, where a is 2.49 plus or minus 0 0.08. So that's my, that's my horizontal velocity. And don't worry about the plus or minus if you don't want to deal with that. And then this uh, B constant is just the X value at T equals zero. That's what that means. Refrigerators make a noise. Okay, so you could save that if you want. I don't really care. So now let's go look at the other graph, the Y graph. Now this one, once you look at a second graph, uh, it will show you both. And so you'll see over here, I have X, I have T, Y, and X. I don't want to look at the X. I'm going to uncheck those. So now they're not on the box. And it still has the linear fit from the other data. So I'm just going to change that. I'm going to change this to a parabola right there. And now you'll see that I get the Y, the A term is 5.2. The term in front of T squared. And if it's a kinematic equation, that's one half a t squared so the acceleration would be twice that or uh, 10.4 meters per second squared which is pretty close to 9.8 right it's pretty close it's not perfect it's pretty close uh, my you know if your scales off a little bit that's why setting that scale is going to mess things up uh, so that's pretty cool now what if what if i had some data and i only wanted to fit part of it well you can just highlight this uh, the part that you want to fit right there. Maybe I just want to fit that part. And then it'll just see the yellow dots and there are the ones that it fits. Finally, one more thing that's very useful. Uh, if you want to export the data and analyze it in a spreadsheet or some other graphing program, Logger Pro, whatever, uh, you can just highlight all the data right here and copy and paste it into whatever you want. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so there you go, video analysis. Um, you, and it's really just a way to get data. And then you have to come up with what questions you want to answer, right? Where would the ball land? How high did the ball go? Uh, what was the speed at the highest point? How fast is it going? Is it a, is it a good video? It, is the acceleration negative 9.8 meters per second squared? What other questions are there? What other questions are there? There you go. So that's, that's how we use video analysis. It's just a way to get data. And this is the simplest video that you could possibly imagine. Um, but you can have more than one object in the video. You can track more than one object. You wouldn't, you would have a, you'd have trouble believing how much stuff you can do with this. It's super powerful, but I'm just using it at the basic level just to start with. So I hope that helps.